Okay, okay. Uh, Kathleen, as you can tell, is the only person up here who's still working for the State Journal full time, which is deserve great credit Press for sticking to it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the um, when you're talking about the uh, di diversity and so forth, first of all, as far as the gender diversity. You realize when Marsh was talking about the fact that there were almost no uh, w women in any reporter positions responsibility, when I got here in 73, the only people, with a, one or two exceptions of a year or two, the only people I ever worked for as my direct employers, bosses were Beverly Hall, Marsha Van Ness, Kathleen Levy, <laughs> Trudy Westfall, and Robin Swartz. So that is total diversity as far as gender. As far as the diversity, as far as ethnic, uh, look at this panel. Okay, we, we actually have had a lot of ethnic diversity in the newsroom, but unfortunately the good reporters just within a year or two always go somewhere else, so it, it never lasts very long. long. Um, I wanted to, just as an aside for a second, uh, say that I'm really glad to be at the uh, uh, Lansing Library here because it was the site of one of my many adventures, which was the time that I got home and was genuinely surprised that I didn't have any books in the car. Okay, I clearly remembered checking out the books, putting them on the top of my car, putting the grandkids in the car, and oh yeah, I didn't remember actually taking the books off the top of the car. So I called up the library quickly, and I told them that I might have spread books all over the pavement, and they said that indeed, people had brought them all back, and I shouldn't worry about it. It, it all worked out happy, and I learned my lesson, almost. A year later, I'm pulling out of a gas station in Cadillac, Michigan, and I hear a crash behind me. And I quickly thought, and I really remembered taking a 12-pack of Diet Coke and putting it on the top of the car, <laughs> putting my grandson in the car, and I didn't remember actually taking it off. So I went back. There are three morals to take from this story. One is, Lansing Library people are very nice, okay? The second one is, if you're going to spill anything off the top of your car, make it library books. Diet Coke is very messy, very messy. <laughs> and the third thing is, you never get credit for anything. Because I think I should get credit for the fact that I've never, to my knowledge, put a grandchild on top of the car. <laughs> okay? that's, that's all I remember, anyway. It, it, anyway, I forgot to say my name. I'm uh, Mike Hughes. I came in uh, 73 here to the paper. And uh, as they've said, it was a very, boy, there were expansive times for the paper at, at some point. I was hired by a guy named, uh, the managing editor was uh, Ben Burns, was a six foot seven inch guy. Very uh, expansionist type of fella who uh, had a, a running agreement with the publisher that even if he had all of his spots filled, if somebody walked in that he really liked, he could hire them and have one more than the amount budgeted. That's, that's very unusual. He did that at least once with a guy named Eric Pope, but that's very unusual to do that. Uh, back then, the paper was booming. You go, I mean, I was sent for a full day of overtime just because um, Earl Butts, the secretary, had made a negative reference to uh, pet food. Said, well, why are we worried about people food? Why don't you just not have pets or something? And he, I think he said it as a joke, but for that, they sent me for a full day to a place where Earl Butts was going to be just to ask him about that. I mean, back then it was a very expansionist uh, thing, and that's had to change as time went on. Uh, I, um, I came in 73, just in time to cover the flood at the spring of 74. Uh, I covered East Lansing for about a year, covered the city hall for two years. That was a very exciting time then with our Earl Gra uh, Jerry Graves and um, Dick Baker, Bob Howe. It was a wonderful time to cover the news. I spent a year on, uh, on the city desk and that as an assistant city editor. And then that was the time where I became the entertainment editor. And as it turned out, I was the first entertainment editor they ever had, and sadly, the, the last one they ever had. I, I did it for 30 years. Uh, th finally, they eliminated all the feature writer positions. Kathleen, a former feature writer, had wisely moved over to the news side a year or two earlier, knew what she was doing. I didn't. So they eliminated all the uh, feature writing jobs, inclu including mine. And uh, they don't have a full-time entertainment writer or anything like that, but I was so lucky to be doing entertainment writing at that time because that was the time when the local entertainment scene was just booming. Boar's Head was at its top then. It was just going like mad. The Okemos Barn had folded because it's, they took away the site. After several years later, came back stronger than ever with the, as the Riverwalk Theater, extremely strong. Uh, LCC 
became much better than anybody ever thought once they built Dart Auditorium. The Wharton Center didn't just bring in a lot of outside shows. It brought a real revitalization of the Lansing Symphony. A, a few places were down. Uh, the Lan Civic Players never really got going. They kept slumping. The uh, MSU Theater Program had a lot of trouble. But the MSU Music Program really went with a guy named Jim Forger heading it. They went like mad. They were very, very ambitious. They brought in their, their jazz program is out of this world good. They hired international prize-winning people for their classical music program. Just became an extremely good program. And so to be able to cover all that stuff over all those years was really, really fun and really enjoyable. I, I got to do it. Um, you know, nobody has expertise in all these things, and I had expertise in none of these things, honestly. I, I, I learned only by being able to talk to people over the years who, who did know that. But I had different people who uh, did have, have expertise. So Ken Glickman was writing about classical, David Winkelstern first was writing about rock and roll, and Kate O'Neill was writing about dance, and these people really knew what they were talking about. I told uh, Kate that uh, at first I didn't know which end of a tutu the noise came out of. <laughs> and, and, and I also told her that, um, okay, I'm going to have to, it's going to take me a minute to remember the other one, but I'll tell you that one later on. Uh, anyway, uh, alongside of this came the thing about the, um, of covering Hollywood. And that's what some people thought that's what I was doing all the time, but that was just an aside to covering all the entertainment here. I started to become the TV writer for Gannett News Service. And uh, that, I started to take trips to Hollywood and so forth and do a lot of phone interviews. And that has just been, again, a, a great, great deal of uh, fun for me. The, um, I, and, and that's something I still do to this day. Uh, it's been five years since I was full-time at the State Journal, but now I write um, separately for a, a dozen papers, including the State Journal and, and on a website, which is just called MikeHughes.tv which is something to do with an island called Tuvalu. Honestly, that's why it's .tv. But anyway, uh, I still get to go to Hollywood. I I'm, spend about a month a year there, and it's very interesting. For, for whatever reason, I've, I've had a chance to do one-on-one -on -one interviews with all six of the friends, all four of the Seinfeld people, uh, and oddly, uh, all three of the original members of the rock group Who. I mean, that's just a, a, a bizarre thing. I, I've had a chance to, uh, to sit on the captain's chair of Deep Space Nine and the president's chair of West Wing and that hideous chair that the uh, father had in uh, Fraser. And, and <laughs> interestingly enough, you, you probably guess this, that was the most comfortable of all the, of all the chairs. It really was. And, um, and I've also had a chance to pat uh, Eddie from Fraser and, uh, and the um, Dreyfus from the Golden Girls. And uh, just this last time, uh, Chris B. Bacon, the two-legged pig, uh, who's in, been in three uh, books. And stuff like that is just an aside, but it's, it's, it's interesting. It's fun to be able to do all those things and to be able to cover Hollywood and so forth. And, uh, but it's something I, I, I do on the side. I, I cover uh, that. I, um, interview people by phone, that, that, that has changed like everything else. But I still envy what people get to do who are really doing the paper here, the people who are doing the daily news. It's exciting. When my neighbor started reporting, uh, became a reporter for a small town paper in Indiana, I told her I was genuinely envious of what she was doing because it's kind of fun to do what I do now, but it's really fun to be in the newspaper thing every day. So that's, that's, that's kind of where I am now and I'll pass it on to this fellow was a legend when I first came in here. Jim Howe was, when, when I came in, the first thing I wanted to do was say, which one is Jim Howe? Because I knew that was important. So here's, here's Jim Howe.